Hi there, my friend and friends. Figuring out alignment and justification with both Flexbox and Grid can definitely be a little bit annoying and is often an exercise in trial and error, but there's actually a decent mental model that you can have to figure these things out. And a little while ago, I looked at this with Flexbox and a lot of people asked me if I could also do it for Grid. And I got good news because you're here for Grid and Grid, I actually find a little bit easier to figure out and understand than with uh, Flexbox, just because Grid's a little bit more structured in everything it's doing. And then we have the align items and justify items and align content and justify content and having both of those it just makes a little bit more logical sense in my mind at least how it works and we're going to explore how that all works here uh, so the very first thing i want to look at is part of it depends on the space available for everything so here i have this parent set up and I have the, all these children in there with different amounts of content. And then if we come and take a look here, I just have a grid template columns currently set up to four and 150 uh, pixels that's right here. And we're gonna play around with this number a little bit as we go, uh, but it's the first thing we're gonna start with at least, and we'll bring in FRs a little bit later. Uh, but I'm also gonna open up my dev tools. So I'm just gonna do an inspect on here and uh, we're gonna go and find the parent so I can turn the grid visualizer on. And I'm also gonna take this dock and I'm gonna move it off screen for now. We'll bring it in if we need it because I will show some useful tools for it after. But the important thing here is to separate the grid that's being created from the element itself. And we can see here, I'm gonna change the color of this. And if ever you wanna do that in your dev tools, once you've turned your grid inspector on with the little icon there, uh, if you come into layout, in the layout, there's the show and hide labels and different things like this. But if you go, here's the, the div parent where the grid is, I can click this and I can change the color. And all of the dev tools that we have now have grid inspectors. Each one's a little bit different, but you can figure it out um, how to switch the colors on them. And so here we see, we have the grid on here and you can actually see that my grid is stopping here, even though the parent is much bigger. And this is an important thing to keep in mind when you're working with grid if you have a set size here rather than say one FR. And I said we'd bring that up. So if you have one FR, it just means we're using up all the available space. So our grid takes up the full width of the parent. But just in case you don't have FRs, which you probably do, but I just, I do want to mention that separation between the grid itself and the parent, because that does play into things a little bit. Now let's get into the first thing, which is the alignment. And so we have an align items of start, which if I do an align items of start right now, you can see what's happening. And this is why for me, it's important to have that grid inspector on because we can see we haven't changed the grid. The align items is saying we're gonna take the items and we're gonna align them differently within the space. So the grid stays exactly the same as it was before. The grid stills are still stretching to fill the entire height here. And the height is coming in because I have this min height of 70 VH here. So if I change the height of my parent, and a lot of the time you won't have a height on your parent, which is fine, we could even turn that off. And then they're gonna match the height of the tallest element there, uh, which is going to create the height. So there's lots of different things that can come into this. Grid inspector is your friend. And the align items is saying, we're not changing anything to do with the grid itself. The grid is staying the same and we're just changing the items to no longer stretch to fill up their entire cell. We're saying the, align the items themselves within their cell are gonna shift and move up to the top. Or if we do an align items end, they're gonna go down to the end. If we do an align items, and we'll put the stretch back on here, or sorry, the height on here, just so we can see even the tall ones are moving down. Uh, we can do the center, and then they're gonna be lining up in the center of their cells. And when you don't have the grid inspector on here, I'm gonna turn it off for a second. It looks really weird when you do an align item center and this is the result you get. And it's like, why is that happening? But I feel like having this on, all of a sudden it makes a lot more sense. We're lining the items up in the middle of their cells and alignment is always going to be on the vertical axis. And that's another reason why it's easier than Flexbox because our axes don't change uh, with a flex direction. With grid, a line is always going to be up and down, justify is always going to be left and right. And I have some comments down here, but let's come in with, with the justify first because one thing we cannot do in Flexbox is do and justify items, but this is something that we can do within grid. And so if I say a justify items of center, we're working in the exact same way. We're now looking at the horizontal axis and we're centering them that way within their cell. And with grid, when we're talking about the individual items, we're always talking about with the items within their own cell. And you can see all of these ones that don't have a lot of content are able to get centered. The ones that have more content, they need more space. So it's not gonna shrink their boxes down. They have to take up that amount of space at just what it is. But these other ones that are smaller are able to shrink down. And if we switch this over to a one FR, we still get the same type of result going on. 
So the items now are centering this way and centering that way. And of course, if we do an end here, then they're gonna go all the way to the end. If I do a start, they go all the way to the start. And I can do a stretch along this axis as well. And then they'll stretch all the way across that way. And the default for both of these is to stretch in both directions. So that's normally what you'll find yourself getting, which is when our items just take up the entire cell, which is usually what you want, but sometimes you need to manipulate things a little bit. I'm gonna leave it like this for now. And actually you can see I made a typo here, but it still worked because with a typo it means it doesn't know what that is and it goes back to the default. <laughs> so there we go, we fixed that. Now I wanna talk about the align and justify content as well. But before we get to that, we're gonna come down and I wanna look at uh, a few other things. So first of all, I'm gonna turn on my second child here, this one that is the red one, we're gonna give it a, an actual width and an actual height. And so that's something we can do. And you'll notice the cell that it's living in hasn't changed. It's just, I'm saying this guy is smaller. And then what I can do is I can do the same thing I was doing before, but I can do it on an individual item. So I can say align self and do center. And it's going to align centered, but only itself. It's not looking at all the items, it's aligning itself. And we have the justify self of center as well, which is going to center it that way. Now he's almost taking up all the room and I'm actually gonna skip over this one here. And we're gonna go over to number five uh, and I'm gonna do a place self. So place self is a shorthand for both of them. It's doing both the start on both the alignment and the justification. And we can do a center here if we wanted to. And that's gonna be perfectly centered or I could do an end and I could push it all the way down to the end. And the reason that it's getting smaller is because now instead of stretching along both axes, and I'm not assigning it a width or a height, so it's just looking at the content that's in there. If I have more text, then it's gonna grow a little bit to accommodate that text because it has a minimum size and we have to turn our inspector back on. And yeah, so now you can see it's still centered, but it's just fitting the content that's inside of there. And align, aligning items and aligning self and stuff like that is super useful. And it's also really cool that we can justify self. Again, not something you can do with Flexbox because with Flexbox justification of self doesn't really make sense because the items are creating their own spaces. Whereas with grid, the parent is creating a cell and then we're moving it around within that cell. So it, it is different and it makes sense why we don't actually have it in Flexbox. I go into more detail in my Flexbox video. So I'll link to that one in the description um, to break that one down. But let's come back up here and I'm gonna come back and we're gonna talk a little bit about aligning content now versus the items. And hopefully this makes everything make a bit more sense. Uh, so if I do an align content of start, Actually, let's turn that off because <laughs> uh, we're gonna look at it like this. Uh, right now, my items are stretching, right? They're all getting bigger to fit because we have it on the stretch and the grid cells that are being created are just gonna fill up the available space that we have because I've set this height on my parent. Let's make this a bit bigger again. And they're always gonna stretch to fill up the entire thing unless we use the align content. And as soon as I come in with align content, the parent isn't changing size like we were looking at earlier when we had uh, the set grid template columns here. And let's bring those back on actually, let's say 150 here, pixels, uh, just cause it's gonna make more sense for the justification. Uh, and so when we do the align content start, we actually have a bit of overflow <laughs> that's happening here, but let's go and take that off. It's happening because we don't have enough room. So we're just gonna remove that. Um, but there we go, we're aligning it to the start. So it's not changing the size of the parent, but what it's doing is it's making the grid as small as possible and it's aligning that grid to the start. So, and as small as possible is based on the content that's in here. So the smallest this row can get is based on the size of the largest element, which is this one. And the smallest this row can get is the size of this. So it's matching the size of those content and shifting the entire grid up without touching the parent. And this makes sense because we're talking about the content. We're taking all of the content as a block and we're moving it around. So if I said, I actually wanna align this to the end, it's going to align all of the content down as a group to the end. Whereas with the items, we're worried about the position of the items within their cells. So items is looking at how are the items positioned within the grid and align content is, can I move this entire grid around within the parent? And once again, we can do a center there. Uh, and place it right in the middle. And we get the same options with justify content. With justify content though, I find we it's less useful and we'll talk about why in a second, but if I do a justify content end, it shifts to the end. Start uh, is at the start as you'd expect. Center is at the center. So we're again, we're, now we're focused on the horizontal axis and we're just saying, how can I move this entire block of content around rather than how can I position the items within their cells? Content is the entire grid within the parent. 
The reason I find that we don't use this one as often is because it's very rare that we have something like our 150 here. We usually have something more like one FR and when you have the FRs, it's always taking up all of the horizontal space because they're just stretching to fill that space up. So whether this is start or end or anything else, you don't actually see a change coming here. And the only time that's gonna happen is if there is leftover space. And just because we're usually making squishy grids and things like that, it's not as often that the justify content actually comes up. And the one last thing I wanna talk about, so I'm gonna take this align content off <laughs> uh, from here, just so we have it filling up all the space. And there is, we have, uh, we looked at the align self, the justify self, and then I was also looking at the place self, which is the shorthand for both of them. Uh, and it is a shorthand, so you can actually provide two values for those uh, as well. But I find if I'm doing both values, I like doing the longhand, just because then I don't get mixed up about which one is which. Uh, but we do also have a place items here that we can use. So we'll actually, we'll take this one off. So I could say place items of center, and it's going to do both the align items and the justify items together. And I can also do a place content of center. And these are ones that place item center and place content center. I mix these up all the time. Uh, and it's really for me, like choose one, then choose the other one. But this is the shorthand for the content version. And this is the shorthand for the alignment properties. And as I said, we could do both. So I could actually say uh, start center if I wanted to. And you can see they've lined up at the start and they're centered this way. Uh, I prefer if I'm going to use the shorthand, I tend to do it because I want them both to be the same. But that's just the way I work. If you like using shorthands, then you could definitely use it. Uh, for the two different values if you prefer. And so a bit of a quick rundown definitely on these, but the main things to take away, open your dev tools so you can visualize what's happening. I'm gonna talk more about the dev tools in a second too. There's one more thing I wanna mention, uh, but just that, uh, that separation of items is the position of the item within their cells and the content is the position of the grid within the parent. And just how sometimes the justify content doesn't really make sense then because we're using up all the available space. So that's the main takeaways I want you to have from this. The other thing that can be really useful is in your dev tools, when you have your display, your grid inspector on, you don't even need the grid inspector, but just here you get this little visualization tool that comes up. And so that just means you can come here and you can actually like plug around and, and try the different things. Cause here's some stuff I didn't even talk about with the space around space evenly uh, options that we have. And there's these different things, the justify content again, won't do anything right now. But uh, along with the align items, you can play around with the different options you have and visually see how these things are actually working, which sometimes can be really, really helpful as well, instead of having to like manually test <laughs> to find the one that you're actually after. So I hope all of this helps. And if you're still trying to f wrap your mind around the Flexbox thing, because it is a little bit different again with Flexbox, very similar. And I think knowing the grid one helps with the Flexbox one. Uh, but if you'd like to know more about the Flexbox breakdown, including why we don't have a justify self or things like that, which feel like they should be really useful and how you can actually get away with it, the similar video to what I'm doing here, but covering Flexbox is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.